my mum was the memory keeper in our family. She kept all the photos and the school reports, the postcards and the letters. She kept the bric-a-brac that tells the story of our family. Stories from when we were very young that I'm not sure I actually remember experiencing, but I do remember her telling me. It's the very small stuff of ordinary life. The story of a family told through its ephemera, collected and kept safe by the memory keeper. I don't remember my first day of school, but I very clearly remember my mom telling me about it how I walked into the classroom carrying a red balloon and I never turned around to wave goodbye to her even though she was crying. And the nun said to her that I could keep the balloon just this once, but no more balloons. When the lived memory is gone, the physical object or the symbol of the memory can bring back the narrative. Memory is elusive, it's subjective, it's interpretive. But if we keep the authentic memory object, we can come back to the story. How many of you have a photo album like this in your family? Every one of these photos is a small story and it really only matters to my family. But what if your photo album is the family album of WB Yeats or Thomas McDonough seen here on holiday with his young son. Then your personal memory, your family memory, becomes part of something larger. It grows a significance and becomes part of a public memory or part of the story of Ireland. And isn't it interesting that any one of these ordinary objects, the photo you may have in your family, can change and become part of a bigger story depending on the future. The family memory keeper collects and keeps these objects safe for the family and that's what the National Library does for our country. National libraries are the memory keepers for a nation. We've collected 25 kilometres of books, <laughs> all the newspapers and periodicals from across the country. Um, photos, Gaelic manuscripts, um, beautiful maps and prints and drawings. Our archives are treasure troves for women's history, for genealogy and heraldry, for theatre and drama. Our literary papers include world-renowned writers, Irish writers, like W.B. Yeats, James Joyce, Edna O'Brien and Seamus Heaney. Our historical treasures include an original 1916 proclamation of the Irish Republic and the papers of the seven signatories of that seminal document. In 1916, a few days after the Easter Rising, the national librarian Thomas Lister wrote to Dublin Castle and asked for a copy of this ephemeral document, the proclamation. He recognised that it would be a hugely important part of the story of Ireland and that it needed to be collected and kept safe for posterity. Collecting memories has always been at the heart of the National Library. Perhaps our most comprehensive collecting activity was the microfilming of the Catholic parish registers from Ireland and Northern Ireland in the 1950s and 60s. These registers contain the records of baptisms and marriages from across Ireland, and they predate civil registration and the 1901 census. So they're really a unique uh, resource for people that want to trace their Irish ancestry or research their family history. Microfilm is a notoriously difficult medium to work with, so if you could read this microfilm, you would see the baptism record of Thomas McDonough. But we also collect the ordinary and the inconsequential. This is an Irish lottery ticket from 1795. Ephemera is the small things of ordinary life, so it's booklets and pamphlets and menus and tickets no one of these objects in itself 
has any great significance. But over time, they give us a record of Irish life, ordinary Irish life. They show us our social history or how Irish society has grown and changed. Ephemera makes an important record of Irish life and I think it's really interesting that these very um, throwaway objects can become some of the most intriguing memories in the national collections. So we collect and keep safe these memory objects because memory is important. It gives us our context, our culture, our heritage as a people. It informs our sense of identity. It tells us where we've come from, and I hope it guides us to where we're going. Memory keeping isn't easy. The national collections are kept in perpetuity for the people of Ireland. That's a big commitment. Each year we collect, and each year the collections grow. We need to store them safely, we need to protect them from the environment that wants to attack them. We want these memories to be findable. We want people to be able to use them. And that means cataloguing and metadata. We've been memory keeping for more than 140 years. But I believe now, in this digital age, we face our greatest challenge. So let's have a think now about what it means to collect new contemporary memories. Does anyone still write letters or do you just send emails? When you go on holiday, do you send a postcard or a birthday card or do you just update Facebook? Texts and tweets have replaced telegrams and instead of a beautiful handwritten illustrated notebook, we're much more likely to see a Word document. So much of our contemporary memory is made up of this digital ephemera. It's born digital. And that means that it's created online. It might live entirely in your computer screen, on your phone screen. It'll also live in your memory, of course, but that's wrapped up in a layer of subjectivity and interpretation. And digital content, the amount of it, grows each year. That's my mailbox. <laughs> I want to apologize if this causes you anxiety just looking at it. <laughs> Every minute, hundreds of millions of emails are sent and tens of thousands of digital photos are published online. The rate of growth of digital content is exponential. If we don't collect this digital material, it'll be lost forever. Already so much of the 21st century is gone from our recorded memory. Vellum and paper and even newspaper will last longer than these digital objects, digital media, and they'll be easier to care for. Here's some examples of new um, contemporary memories that we've captured in the National Library's web archive. Water protests, the marriage equality referendum, Brexit, and the commemorations of the 1916 Rising. We capture these memories as they're expressed at the time. And keeping this authentic archive material allows people to come back in the future and to see how we discuss these events exactly as they happened. You have to burn a book to erase it, but every day, websites and tweets are erased as if they had never existed. And how do we keep safe these digital memories that we collect? Digital media change and become obsolete really quickly. Who's having a flashback here to <laughs> floppy disks, VHS, Betamax, music cassettes? If you have digital content on an old floppy disk now, you'll need an emulator, a data transfer service, or a really old computer to access that information. And it's a really common misconception that if you have this digital content, you can put it on a memory stick, you can back up your hard drive, everybody's backed up their hard drive, I hope. You could publish the digital content online 
and that'll keep it safe for the future. But that's no guarantee at all. The digital world rots and decays the same as everything else does. And it's still an open question as to rather, whether you would rather deal with rotting paper or rotting bits and bytes. But the best thing about digital content is the ability to publish it online and to engage with millions of people across the world instantaneously. That's a real game changer. And for us, that's happened within a single generation. This is a photo from John F. Kennedy's visit to Ireland in 1963. 50 years after that photo was taken, that little boy in the front was able to come forward to us in the National Library and say that it was he in the photo. We publish our beautiful, evocative, digitised photos online using Flickr. And our Flickr community engage with these objects. They add their personal memories into these public memories. They might identify who's in the photo or the place of the time. And the national collections are enriched through the addition of those personal memories. It's really a marriage of public and private memories. In 1914, a war broke out in Europe that would change the world forever. In Ireland, many people supported the cause and joined up but many object objected on moral and political grounds. More than 200,000 Irish people enlisted in the British Army during World War I. For many of the families, this sacrifice was not acknowledged at all. People didn't talk about it. In 2012, we set out in the National Library to gather these lost memories to tell the story of the Irish in World War I. We organised a series of collection days across the country and families brought their medals and their letters and their photographs. And we gathered the stories that accompanied those really evocative personal objects. For the families, it was a chance for them to share their memories and their stories with a wider audience. But we found just as importantly was the opportunity for the families to share their common experiences, for them to be able to talk amongst themselves about an experience that hadn't been played out or explained in public before. Portraits of the Invisible was the exhibition that we then organised to acknowledge the Irish contribution in World War I. It featured photos of the Irish soldiers and nurses, stretcher bearers, sailors and pilots. And the stories that went with those photos that the families had treasured for generations. I think it's a really important example of how national memory can be neglected. But how we can take actions to restore those lost memories before they're gone forever. To make a more complete record for the future. And I think you can see from the photo the very real effect it had for the families involved. So I hope I've convinced you that collecting memory is important and the special role that the National Library has in collecting the national memory. I want you all now to look at your phone for a minute and think about the special memories you have on there. That's me and my daughter Maeve. That's a memory on my phone that I don't want to forget. And that's what the National Library is keeping safe for Ireland. Thank you. <laughs>